Would you like to go with me? Listen, that's the one thing I won't do. I thought we settled that a year ago at Miller's Farm. Well, I mean it. I think you're the most beautiful girl in the world, and I'm the man to take care of you. Am I being proposed to? You're getting the news broken to you gently that you're going to be Mrs. Jack Maitland of New York. It looks great. Anything else, sir? Ice no. water? If I want anything, I'll I'll call you. Thank you, sir. Sure. Nellie. Why, darling, you're trembling. Uh, it, it's just excitement. Mrs. Jack Maitland. Are you sleepy? Sleep? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Why don't we drive to New York now? Now? It's only two hours. Oh, oh, oh. Now, see here. Who is your boss? My husband. You love him? Yes. Afraid of him? <laughs> I guess I'm silly. <laughs> Of course you are. Now, come on, darling, and get some rest. You're all tired out. A little rest will do you worlds of good. I have to telegraph. Telegraph? Yeah, my mother. Oh, good heavens. I'll telephone her. You get to bed. Hello. Uh, give me long distance, please. Hello, uh, Mrs. Blake. Uh, this is Jack Maitland. Uh, Millie wants to talk to you. Hold the wire, please. Yes, hold, hold the phone. Oh, Millie. Millie. Come on, darling. This is long distance. Step on it. But I haven't anything to put on. Oh, here.
Please hurry, honey. Hello, dear. I'm... I'm married. I married Jack Maitland. We're in a hotel in Greenwich. Married? Well, if you're married to such a fine man as Jack Maitland, what are you crying about? But I... I never got married before. How can I tell? I'll... I'll write to you when we get to New York. Goodbye, dear. Did you tell her? Yes. What did she say? She said, for you to be good to me. You did not think of that. Such a big girl. I don't know my little thing. Yes, dear. Do you want your bath now, huh? You do? And shall Mama give it to you? Oh, you dear. <laughs> Mother loves you so. Precious one. Come on, stand up. Up she goes. Oh, you're getting so big, honey. I don't know my little girl. Come on. Shall we go in? All righty. Come in. Time for the baby's bath, Miss Maitland. Oh. Let me give her a bath, will you? I'll do it just like you now, do Ms. it. Miss Maitland, don't tease. Oh, go on. Please let me. I'm sorry, Miss Maitland. Say, whose baby is this? Well, what's that all about? You'd think she owned my baby. Well, we see it about ten minutes a day. Oh, Jack. Don't be cross. Honey, it's awful. I haven't got a thing to do all day long until you come home. It's too bad about you, isn't it? A beautiful home, all the clothes that money can buy, and a car to ride around in. Oh, that doesn't make up for being lonely. Yes? Your bags are all packed, sir. And the car's at the door. Yes. Oh, Jack. Are you going to go away again this weekend? My business demands it. Oh, honey. Forget business for a couple of days. Let's be like we used to, just the two of us. Are you going to start that again? I'm sorry. I, I won't talk about it anymore. You're a sweet kid. I thought you were going to forget again this morning. Forget what? To kiss me. Well, you see, I didn't. Oh, but Jack, I... I mean a real kiss, the way you used to. There you are. Well, what's the matter now? Don't you love me anymore? Well, of course I do, sweet, but... You don't kiss like it. Well, good heavens, dear. I can't waste all my days billing and cooing. I have business to look after. Well, business didn't bother you when we were first married. You don't love me anymore. That's what it is. I loved you when I married you, and I love you now. Well, then why do you leave me day after day? I get so lonesome I could die. Do you think I go away because I want to? Why are you always kicking? Well, why shouldn't I kick? I'd like a little fun for a change. I'd like a little loving once in a while. And what do I get? You're downtown all day. When you do come home at night, you go to bed and you snore. 
Listen, I'm not going to stand here and argue with you. I have a train to catch. Goodbye. That's right. Run. You big coward. Run. Good morning, Millicent. Good morning, Mother. How's the baby? Oh, she, she's just like a little angel. What's the matter, sweet? I'm afraid I was cross with Jack this morning. Oh, he'll get over it. I'm sure of that. It takes time for young people to adjust themselves to each other, and a whole lot of you do like me a little, don't you? I love you, Millicent. I was thinking only this morning that if I had a daughter, I should want her to be just like you. <laughs> I could just hug you to pieces with her. Thank you, dear. Maybe that's Jack now. <laughs> And you never told me. Why, Angie and I grew up together. <laughs> oh, well, I didn't ring you because I thought you might be too proud to talk to me. Well, then I got thinking you might get sore if I didn't, so I did. <laughs> so she did. Oh, I live with a girl named Helen. Oh, I'm, I'm working. So you're a sales girl at Mason's. I'm a sales girl at Mason's. You've got the day off. I've got the day off. Tell her to meet you in front of Mason's at 1. Can you meet me in front of Mason's? 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock? All right. I'd like to see you pretty bad. Goodbye. <laughs> I got her to come. You got her to come. She's coming in spite of you. Guess I know how to talk to a friend from home without you telling me. Did you tell her how to bring your room rent? You will get your money. Now, will you fade? Why, I never knew they had cabarets running in the daytime. Yes. It's a place for tired businessmen to relax in. Oh, hello. Hello. Uh, same as usual? Yes, thanks. I'll take ginger ale. Yes. <laughs> I come here pretty often. Yes, I, I see you're rather well acquainted. <laughs> it isn't hard for a girl to get acquainted in this town. <laughs> oh, Angie. Don't try and spoof me. I'm your friend. Tell me... How did you happen to come to New York? Well, I got engaged to a man who got his divorce in Mexico. You would. Well, how can a girl tell what's going to happen in Mexico? <laughs> oh, Angie. Hello, Miss Riley. Oh, hello, Max. I'm looking for my girlfriend. Oh, never mind. There she is. All right. Oh, there hello. you are, my dear. Hello, Helen. Uh, Miss Riley, Miss Blake. Oh, uh, Mrs. Maitland now, is it not? Well, just Millie, if you'd like. Won't you have something? Cream to milk. Not hard to manage, you know. This is a pleasant little uh, witch part. Say, what's that crack? I, I beg your pardon. Beat it, beat it, go on, beat it. Oh, well, uh, I hope you don't misunderstand, my dear. No, I, I don't. Oh, then I can relax. <laughs> Say, honestly, Millie, you're a good egg. Well, I hope so. <laughs> Say, I, I like to call my home. My husband's away, and suppose we have dinner tonight. Gee, that'd be swell. Where the phone? Right over there by the door. I'll show you, Millie. No, don't bother. I can find her. Say, you know, Angie, I like that dame. 
What ails you? Well, the dirty cheater. Who? Him, her husband. That one with the blonde hair? Yeah. Well, whatever made you bring her here, you little moron? Well, how did I know? Why, he's in here all the time. I've never seen him. Oh, he has that blonde dame in here five days a week. Really? There we are. <laughs> She comes. Oh, get her out of here. Tell her you're sick. Tell her anything. Do we have dinner here? Oh, no. The food here is terrible, Millie. Let's go to Cavern. Yes, let's. Are we going to have our drinks? Oh, we can get some drinks over there. Yes, and it's, it's so stuffy in here, I feel a little faint. <laughs> yeah, come on, Millie, let's blow. Oh, I love this tune they're playing. Let's watch him dance a few minutes. Oh, oh, come on, Millie, let's not eat here. Well, all right. Jack. Honey, let's not dance anymore. I want to sit down with you. All right, George. Oh, I'll bet that dame can suck. Her father was a blacksmith. Really? Beautiful. What can we do for you? Millie. Who is this woman? Who wants to know? Quiet. What for? Say, what are you butting in here for? Please, please will you come on? Let's get out of here. Take your Who hands off me. Dame, anyhow. Will you keep quiet? This is my wife. That wouldn't mean anything to her. Oh, your wife. Will you keep quiet? You'll have everybody in the place in here. Let them come in. Well, Mrs. Maitland, we'll have a showdown, and right now. Tell her what I am to you, or I will. Go on, tell me what he is to you. She doesn't know what she's talking about. I don't? Well, I'm his sweetheart, that's what I am, and you don't mean a thing to him. Millie! Wait, will you hold her? So this was your important business. Let me go. Citizen, please, will you Let come out of here? I must start dragging you. Take your hands off me. You and I are through, you cheat. Oh, Millie, I'm terribly sorry. Gee, Millie, you look kind of sick. Honey, don't you think we'd better go? I'm all right. Millie, will you come out of this place? If it's good enough for you, it's good enough for me. But you can't be seen here. From now on, I don't care where I'm seen. As long as I'm not seen with you. you into. Uh-huh. Floyd Avenue on the elevator. Oh, it isn't so bad. Well, I'm through with marriage. From now on, I'll pay my own way. Well, you better get into your salvage some good clothes anyway. Mm -hmm. This is nice. Here, slip it on and we'll take you to the domino room and show you off. And we'll get you a job in the course just like we started with. <laughs> that ought to get you a quick offer. But I can't afford to go out night. Well, you certainly can't afford to stay home nights. <laughs> Not at this stage in the game. I've got to get up in the morning early and look for work. What? Work? Well, of course. Well, when are you going to find time for opportunity? Well, don't you call a good job an opportunity? Well, I wouldn't call it very substantial. <laughs> now, uh, just what kind of a job would you like? Well, what? Uh, I don't know. I want... Mm, I see. You're just going to pass up everything and become a working girl. Yes, I guess that's it. 
What I can't understand is giving up that baby and not collecting for it. I think it's unnatural. Terrible. But wouldn't it be selfish to take her away from that beautiful home? And besides, it, it isn't really like giving her up. I call her up every night and, and I see her Sunday. Isn't she a darling? Gee, I suppose nothing matters when, when you've got something like that. dinner at home, but if I ever come to Akron, I certainly will. <laughs> you know, I could use you very nicely in one of our shows. Well, thanks, Mr. Marks, but I don't want to join your show, or any show for that matter. Hmm, no thanks. I've met all the rich brokers I care to in the last two years right here. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Daniel. Good morning, Millie. Hello, Jim. Hello, Mark. Some cigarettes, please. Mark, it's a lucky thing for you. You haven't got Miss Blake in your show. Lucky? How? Well, you'd never find another girl lovely enough to match up with her. Oh, that stops me. <laughs> I bet you went to bed early to crack them out that good. I stepped around till four. Well, you certainly don't look it. No? I have to get my good old eight hours or I'll never get any place. Just what is your ambition, Millie? Oh, to keep my independence and perhaps a little comfort. Finding it difficult? Sort of. Really? You know, independence seems to be a hard thing to hang on to. Well, how about the comfort? Oh, lots of offers. Oh, I see. Then I'll have to wait my turn in line, huh? Oh, no, you won't. Well, that's interesting. There isn't any line. And that's unbelievable. Oh, yes? Yes. Hello, Millie. Oh, hello, hello Charlie. Millie. Hello, Millie. Hello. Well, how's the press this morning? Not so good, Jim. <laughs> what a crop of eyes you three have. <laughs> you ought to see the, the, the tonsils. <laughs> Why don't you boys go up to my room and ask Henry to mix you a pickup? Oh, thanks, Jimmy. These bankers have such t tender hearts. Why shouldn't they run the country? Don't ask me a riddle. Come on, let's get that lifesaver. <laughs> well, as I was saying... See you later, Tommy. So long. Millie? Bye. <laughs> Smarty. I could let him get away with that. As sick as I am. Oh, Tommy, why don't you slow down? You'll never get any place until you do. I wish I felt as good as you look. Uh-huh. Well, you got to start the night before for that. Hello, Millie. Sorry I was late. Oh, that's all right. Well, what's the idea? This is my day off. Say, when you take a day off, it's a national holiday. <laughs> what do you say we go to Coney Island and celebrate? No, Tommy, I wouldn't risk having you fired. Oh, don't worry. I take that risk 365 days a year. What do you say? I can fix it with the editor. All right. I'll go get that pickup and be right back. If we go to Coney, no pickup. Okay, no pickup. Well, for heaven's sake. Hey, who's been gilding these lilies? Oh, hello, Millie. Hello, hello Millie. Oh, don't you look grand? <laughs> We're just back from Saratoga. Hmm, what a season we've had. Oh, they're lovely. You know Mr. Rock, don't you? I'm afraid so. We're lunching at Sherry's. 
Yeah, what's going on there? A trade convention? Soak your head. Would you like to come along, dear? No, I'm going to Coney with Tommy. What a man. I have my moment. Mm. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> what in the world do you see in that egg? Oh, he's a nice boy, and he doesn't try to pull me. She goes out with men for the darndest reasons. Well, say, we saw Maitland in Saratoga, and of all the parties he threw... You know, Millie, every time I think of you turning down that Maitland dough, I get chill blame. Oh. When I'm through with a man, I'm through. When I'm through with a man, I'm just beginning. Let's go, huh? All right. You don't mind if we run? No, bring us up sometime, Millie, will you? Yeah, I will. Don't let Millie eat too much. No, I won't. <laughs> Come on, dear. Look at her going to Coney with a reporter. I don't know what it is, but that town you two came from leaves a terrible mark. What kind of a mark? Oh, shut up. Wouldn't ain't you how I'll get a laugh on it? You should worry. I know. I know what I like. They don't. Oh, yeah? Like me alone? Uh-huh. I never knew before I could do it on ice cream soda. You didn't. You know what you need, the Guardian. That's right. You know what I need is a wife. Oh, well, don't look at me and say it. I held a wife's job once. This would be different. Maybe it'd be different, but it would still be a terrible position. I'd rather be in the tobacco business. Do I, uh... Uh-uh. You don't. Yeah. Good night. Good night. <laughs> it's nice to be a geranium and bloom out in the spring. And when the birds return from the south, I can merely sing. <laughs> 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 Because they grow in the side of a cottage soil <laughs> still. One would think that the poor thing would never again a thrill. But when they find their delicate legs around the windowsill. Oh, oh, it's like to be a geranium instead of a jack and kill. Uh, Tommy, I thought you might need some reinforcements about now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Millie, we're saved. The Marines are here. Hey! Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Millie. Gee, I'm glad to see you. Hello there, Mike. Give me that. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You don't know how heavy that is. Lead the way, Millie. Right. Come on. Come <laughs> on, Mike. Hey, <laughs> 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 
Say, what brings Jimmy Damier here? What brings Jimmy Damier anywhere other than his day? <laughs> it's nice seeing you again, Miss Millie. Yeah, that'll be all, Mac. Yes, sir. Good night, Miss Millie. Good night. Here, Miss Dillard. I'm all drink myself. Well, I might have one. Hey, Tommy. <laughs> Tommy, look. Say, Tommy, J Jimmy Damer is out in the kitchen all alone with Millie. Sh sh shall I sock him? Don't be silly. Jimmy's my pal. And don't you worry about little Millie. I guess the party's over. I don't know when I've had a better time. You know, you're wonderful to talk to, Millie. Mm -hmm. I loved hearing about your travels. It must be wonderful to see the world. I... I want you to see my Mandarin robes. Don't you think you should put them in a museum for everyone to see? Uh -uh. No, I keep those for people I like. Oh. That's the kick in having them. I see. Well, suppose we toddle along. We? Uh huh. We? We. Party seems to be over. I'll see you home. Will you? Naturally. Have you a hat? That's all I came in. Our host. Oh. Oh, he'll be all right. Great kid, Tommy. Oh, it's from the other two. Have gone to the Turkish bath, Johnny. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, let's get going, shall we? My car's outside. Yes, just a minute. Good night, dear. Good night. Well, what's the idea? Aren't I seeing you home? Not this trip. You're kind of slow making up your mind, aren't you, Millie? No. My mind's made up. Good night. I see. Good night, Millie. Nobody home. Hey, look at this joint. It's all cleaned up. Yeah. We must have a little fucking fairy in our home. Hmm. Since when did Tommy take to reading the women's fashion page? Mm Hello. Hello, Tommy. Look, bouquet and everything. I've gone romantic on you. Oh, Tommy, you're so sweet. 
I was just thinking about you. I know. I could feel it all the way up Broadway. I wish you didn't have to work. So do I. We ought to have had today together. Mm. But aren't you grateful for what we have? Sure I am. Gee, I'm happy. Are you, darling? I am, too. Oh, come on, Millie. Marry me, won't you? I want something to hold us together. But tell me, love will do that. If it can't, then the rest doesn't matter. But, darling... Oh, it's like I said, Tommy. I tried it once and it didn't work out. Now I... I would marry the best man living. Mm. And you are that to me. But I'll stick to you, Tommy. Good luck, Millie. You deserve it. <laughs> you certainly do. Say, you know, I didn't think the answer had that much good sense. Oh, I'm a big shot now. Private secretary and everything. Well, that calls for a few hearty congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just swell the way you kept abreast with us. Oh, I've been lucky. That's one reason I'm giving that party tonight at the Clarendon. We'll be there. Though, as a matter of fact, it's a double celebration. It's for Tommy's good luck, too. Say, what's that reporter bulled out of you now? Jimmy Damier's giving him a publicity job in the Haymarket Bank. Hooray. Isn't that grand? It's a surprise, too. Tommy doesn't know what it's all about. And that's what I've always suspected. Oh, now, stop it. <laughs> why don't you get Mr. Damier to do something for you for a change? Yeah, why don't you start looking out for little Millie? These things don't last, you know. Hmm. I'm not worrying. After four years? <laughs> it's time you started. I've decided it's time I looked around for an advantageous marriage. Oh, really? I feel I've done all that can be done with the present situation. <laughs> Here you are, honey. Well, I'm going to call Tommy. Excuse me. So now she's got him in the bank. Well, he won't have to worry about money anymore. No. But the bank will. Go. Go. You can't. Oh, Tommy, it's going to be a wonderful party. You can come late, can't you? But you know what these assignments are. But, but it won't take all night. You can come any time before daylight. And, Tommy, I got a big surprise. I'll tell you at the party. You'll be sure and come now. Oh, all right, honey. But I don't know what time it'll be, though. So long. Max just wrote it. Do you like it? Oh, Jimmy, I love it. I'll have one written for you. Oh, oh, me too. Oh, oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh I, I didn't have any idea Tommy'd be so late. 
Maybe he's out on a special assignment. Yes, he is. Yeah? Blonde or brunette? Oh, Jimmy, that doesn't sound like you. Well, I'm not worrying if you're not. Yes, I've been around the world several times. I'm, uh, I'm starting again, just as soon as I can straighten out some matters in Omaha. Oh, I just love to travel. You know, I've given up the idea of marrying for love. I mean, a cute love. <laughs> Someday I hope to marry a nice conservative gentleman, just to travel. Uh, suppose we have lunch tomorrow. I want to show you my itinerary. Oh, Mr. Hawksworth. <laughs> Angie. Oh, let's you and I dance. Uh, uh, certainly. Uh, you partner. I think I'll go phone Tommy. Sure. Excuse me. Pardon me just a moment, won't you? I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, it's nothing. Millie Blake for Tommy Rock. <laughs> say, there's a dame ought to have her brains taken out and renovated. Yeah? I'll say so. Passing up a boy like Jimmy Damier to let a cheap reporter play her for a sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Talk her out of that and you'll be doing something. Say, maybe I couldn't. What do you mean? I could tell her whose apartment Tommy Rock's parked in right this minute. Uh. Oh, hello, Millie. I didn't see you. What do you mean? Oh, don't pay any attention to her, Millie. You shut your trap, Roscoe. Go on, Roscoe. You started it. Now finish it. Sure I will. Get out. No, I won't. She wants it. She'll get it. Go on. He's in Madge Bergman's apartment. You're a liar. Oh, am I? All right. I'll show you. Oh, give me a nickel, someone. Say, you beat it, you meddling little... She can't call me a liar. Here's your nickel. What do you want to listen to, a for, Millie? Give me Brian, 3342. Oh, come on, Millie, let's go. She's tight. Let me alone. Hello, that you, Madge? This is Clara. Say, listen, dear, I left my bag at your apartment this afternoon and all my money's in it. Listen, I thought your boyfriend could bring it down. But if Tommy's coming down, why can't he slip me the bag? I'm sitting right by the table, right by the door. Oh, nobody will see him. Okay. Well, how will you like it when I get the bag? You won't. No? Just watch my table. It's right by the door. What's wrong, Millie? What? Well, why the sudden flop? Oh, I... I was just wondering where Tommy could be. Well, he'll be along soon. Sure. 
Thanks, Tommy. That's all right. Look out, Millie. That isn't water. No? Well, come again. Mm. Jimmy, I'm a red-headed woman. Look out for me. Hello, everybody. Hello, Hello. 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 Oh, We've been expecting you for weeks. <laughs> Hello, honey. How are you, Jim? I'm fine, Tom. Sit down, Tommy. Yeah. Now that the little white-haired boy is here, let's bring the big surprise. Well, say, what is all this? A surprise for you, Tommy. We're going to start you all out in the world right. Hey, Millie, Millie. Oh, let loose, Jimmy. All right. Say! Don't you like it? Mr. Tommy Rock doesn't know it yet, but as a result of his recent achievements in New York journalism, it gives me the very greatest pleasure to offer him the position of publicity director at the Haymarket Bank. Say! Will you take it, Tommy? I suppose it's thanks to you, huh? Will you take it anyhow? Will I take it? Oh, good boy. Atta Tommy. boy. Now, as I was Let saying... Let me finish it, Jimmy. Why, of course. Mr. Rock will take anything without bothering where he finds it. Even apartment numbers don't mean anything in Mr. Rock's life. He simply gets the idea that he is necessary on the inside and, and goes right in. Well, Millie... You just heard Mr. Rock say he'd take this position. Well, now that he's in such a taking mood, I'm going to ask him to take something else. The gate! Well, Millie, what ails you? I'm just fixing things up for your blonde friend. I'm big-hearted. <laughs> say, what's the idea? Get out, will you? You're crowding a party. Millie, Come on, Jimmy, fire up the place. This is our night. Before I go any place with you, you're coming somewhere with me. Well, what are you going to do? Never mind. There's something I've got to do. Now, listen. Say, who follows who? I follow you? No, sir. You follow me. Jimmy, I'm a red-headed woman. What's the idea of coming here, Millie? I don't know. I thought there were a few things around here Mr. Rock wouldn't need. My picture, for instance. First, you wouldn't like that around. And those little knickknacks. I made them myself just to make things kind of homey. <laughs> here, here, Millie, now, come on, pull yourself together. Don't you worry about me! George. Say, did the porter leave my railroad tickets here with you? Yes, here they are, Johnny. Ah, oh, thanks, George. Well, if I don't see you again, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, Jimmy. Well, hello, Tommy. Where are you going with that turkey? Huh? Oh, Over there. Oh, Christmas dinner with a wife. Home stuff, you know. 
Well, you'll be a little late for Christmas dinner in Albany, won't you? Huh? No. Huh? I don't have to be there till Thursday, the day before Christmas. Oh, well, today is Christmas. Yesterday was Thursday. Thursday? Mm-hmm. Well, whatever became of Wednesday? I'm going to telephone and find out about this. <laughs> hello, Jim. Why, hello, Mark. Merry Christmas. Same to you. What's wrong with Holmes? He's lost something. Yeah? Yeah. What? Wednesday. Oh. <laughs> Who are you dining with tonight, Jim? I'm dining alone. Oh. oh. Who's Millie playing around with now? At this moment? Oh, it may be a grand duke. Or it may be anybody. <laughs> I think I'll give her a ring, Mark. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> Say, that story's been spoiling in the icebox for six months. <laughs> well, really, <laughs> Elma. Yes, dear. Oh, well, we must be going. Uh, yes, dear. <laughs> Say, what's the matter? Can't you stand a healthy story since you're married? My dear, married life has done nothing to my sense of humor. Mm, you're right about that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, will somebody answer that phone? Answer it yourself. It's probably another division of your love parade. <laughs> Mark Hamill, up. All right. <laughs> uh, Helen, can we drop you somewhere? Oh, thanks awfully, old thing. But I'm spending the afternoon with Millie. <laughs> Petey, don't you drop me anywhere. All right. <laughs> uh, hasn't Millie changed? Oh, don't be silly. She's just trying to forget Tommy Rock. After six months, say, has it ever occurred to you there are brains that remember six months? Really? Holy. Well, we must be uh, coming along. Bye bye. Goodbye. Oh, hello, darling. Mr. Millie, why don't you and I go someplace? Huh? Somewhere. Well, Angel, come on over here. Uh -uh, not with that gang you've got there. Did you get my present? Uh-huh. I was swell, Jimmy. Well, I don't know why you sent it, because it's going to go right back. I still pay my own way. Oh, Jimmy, how you swear. Say, listen. Why don't you give me a New Year's party at the lodge? You can't. Oh, shit. Does that put you in a better frame of mind, darling? Now have a nice Christmas. Bye bye. <laughs> What's the idea about New Year's? You heard me. Oh, I can't stand this, Millie. Why not? You won't be there. Jimmy Damier, one of the field, eh? <laughs> That's a laugh. Yes, and after two years, it's getting on my nerves. Oh, forget her. Forget her? You don't know, Millie. She gets in your blood. I never knew a woman like her. But, Millie... Run along. You spend Christmas with your wife. But I don't understand. I, I, I thought... I've changed my mind. Goodbye. Merry Christmas. And a happy new year. Hello? Oh, Tommy. Hey, I... I just want to wish you a Merry Christmas. You remember the last one we had together? I haven't been giving it much thought, but thanks for the good wishes. Oh, oh say, Millie, I'm feeling kind of low. 
Couldn't I drop over for a little while? No, I, I'm sorry, Ty. I'm busy. But Merry Christmas and thanks for calling up. Goodbye. Don't cry, Millie. You know what you need? A good drink. Merry Christmas. Why? Hey, what are you talking about? You got everything you want, haven't you? Sure. Everything. That's good. Shall I answer that? No. That old Jimmy Damien. He's been calling up all night. <laughs> Probably lost his keys and wants to get in somewhere. <laughs> well, he's not going to get in here tonight. He can only come here when I say so. Hey, I don't know what's the matter with you. That Tommy Rock calling up and sending you those flowers. Sure. All the others have bottles. Say, why don't you get him out of your mind? He's nothing but a good-looking tramp. But, Helen, you don't understand. You've never really been in love. Oh, no. Say, listen, I was an actor in Toledo. Oh, I just cried my eyes out. Oh, Helen. I didn't mean to make you cry. That's all right, Millie. I'm sorry. Forget them. They're all alive. Hey, the only thing I ever got out of love is a pain. And then they're all trapped. Oh, awful tramp. Skull. Skull. Table for two, please. Places, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. Your <laughs> fault. You spoiled it. What happened anyway? You know, you know how Millie always used to be? Insisted on working and doing as she pleased? I could never be with her unless she wanted me to. Finally, it got on my nerves. <laughs> uh, well, you can laugh, Mark, but you never knew her. Praises be. Mm -hmm. She looks good to me, though. Even if she has a daughter, 17. Is she... Is she anything like... She's going to be a queen. Really? Haven't you seen her? No. No, I haven't seen her since she was a little kid so high. I sent her a present once and I nearly got my head bitten off. <laughs> <laughs> Get an eyeful, boy. You'll wish you were back at college. Taking her to parties. Yeah? Where do you ever see her? Me? I'll let you in on a little secret. To please my old mother, I go to church. Oh, 
Oh, yeah? The kid attends with old Mrs. Maitland. Oh, I see. I know the Maitland slightly. Say, Mark, call for me Sunday, will you? Golf? Uh-uh. Church. <laughs> the walls will fall in. Hello, Millie. How are you? I'm fine. Say, have you seen anything of Jimmy Damier tonight? Why, yes. There he is, over there. Let me have a table. Why, sure. Bill? Tell Mr. Damier that I want to see him immediately. That okay? <laughs> you bet. All right. Oh, Jim. What? Yeah? Where? There. Oh. All right. Will you excuse me? Certainly. I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, hello, Millie. Hello, Jim. Well, how are you? Haven't seen you for ever so long. Sit down. I wish I could, Millie, but I'm rather... Please, sit down. Sure. Sure. Well, what's on your mind? There's something I want to talk to you about. I'm worried. Yeah? What about? I've heard from half a dozen people... That you're seen around the Maitland home. Oh, yeah? Well, Maitland and I have got a business deal together. Why should that worry you? Because you're seeing my little girl, Connie, and I now, want you... Now, just a minute, Millie. Just a minute. It's not my fault if she happens to be home when I'm dining there. You've taken her to the theater? Yes, but her grandmother's been along. Why, she's a kid of 16. That wouldn't mean anything to you. No? Well, I'm much obliged for your good opinion of me. However, I don't think it's anybody's business where I go or with whom. No? No. Well, this happens to be my business. If you hurt my baby, I'll... I'll stop at nothing. Oh, oh what rot. Please, Jim, won't you do this for me? It's only for my peace of mind. It's not much I'm asking, only to keep away from my little girl. Sure, sure, if you're so wrought up about it, all right. Thank you. Will you shake on it? Sure. You've always been a good friend, Jim. Feel better now? A lot. Fine. We'll say it's for old times' sake, huh? Uh -huh. For old times' sake. Mm -hmm. Will you sit down and have a drink with me? I wish I could, Millie, but I'm very busy tonight. Yes, I know. Well, goodbye. Bye, Dad. 
Grandma. I'll be down next weekend. Isn't it something new? You're coming in from school every weekend. <laughs> as long as you say I'm late. It's all right at school, you know. And Uncle Jimmy's going to take me to the matinee next Saturday. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's good of you, Jimmy, to drive her out to school. Oh, not at all. It's only a mile or so beyond the lodge. Good. Lucky for me, we were going at the same time. We'll be seeing you next week. Yes, I'll telephone. Good. Goodbye. Goodbye, sweet. <laughs> Goodbye. Come back in a couple of hours, will you, Mike? Yes, sir. Come on and sit by the fire. Thank you. First of all, I'm going to take off your coat. Now the hat. <laughs> Good. Now you sit down here and make yourself comfortable. Thank you. I'll take off your galoshes. <laughs> it's sure it's cold out, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now we've got to warm up those pretty little legs. I'll warm by the fire. Huh? Hello? Oh, this is Mike, Miss Millie. Yeah. Say, maybe I'm talking out of turn, but I just felt I had to tell you this. But listen, if it gets past you, it's going to cost me my job. Well, I picked up your daughter with Damien tonight at her home. But Mike, he was taking her to school, wasn't he? Well, he didn't take her to school. He stopped off at his lodge up in the country instead. Yeah, they're there now. The kids seem to think it was just a lark. Hello? 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 I think I can talk your grandmother out of her objections. If you'll just have patience. Oh, I'm crazy to get started. Are you? I've always wanted to be an actress ever since I was a baby. Well, I think you're quite old enough to do as you please now. Oh, you're a peach to say that, Uncle Jimmy. Am I? Keep it there. Gee, it's great to be here talking about my career instead of fooling around with the girls at school. Yeah, yeah, not not quite so conventional, huh? Well, if I'm going to have an art career, I certainly can't be bothered about convention. Well, certainly not. But I hope your grandmother won't mind. Am I being here? Yeah. I suppose she would. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, not so good, huh? Well, you know that my preparing for the stage was a secret, and that my being here is part of that. So, I don't think it's necessary to mention it. I don't think so either. <laughs> Will you have a little more cider? Do you think I'd better? Oh, it can't possibly hurt you. <laughs> there. Thank you. It tickles my nose. Does it? 
that I like it. Do you? Well, have some more. <laughs> I always have such a good time when I'm with you, Uncle Jimmy. Yeah, well, now, suppose we forget the uncle part of it for just now, and, and you call me Jimmy. All right. Jimmy. All right. And just for that, I'm going to show you something. You like it? Oh. Now you just slip that mandarin coat on you. May I? Yes, indeed. Oh, would you please step on it? It's not far. We're almost there. Please hurry. Hurry. Hmm? Now let me see it. Oh. And if it matches your beauty, it's yours. <laughs> it does. Really? Uh-huh. Oh, Jenny. Oh. Oh, Jimmy, you're the most wonderful man in the world. You're the most beautiful girl I ever saw. Coming, you better go upstairs. Oh, but I want to go, go home. Go upstairs. Hurry up now. Go in that room. all your promises. Where's my little girl? Well, how do I know? She isn't here. No? No. Well, I'm going to go see. You're going to do nothing of the kind. don't know who this woman was? No. You didn't see her when you were struggling with Mr. Damier? No. Didn't you try to see her? No. Did you hear this unknown woman leave the house? I... I don't know. You will answer yes or no. I don't know, I said. Miss Blake. You've already testified that you heard a woman leave the house just after the shot was fired. Now, weren't you interested in seeing who this person was who might have been a witness to the shooting? Not a bit. Why not? Because you already knew? Your Honor, I object. Objection sustained. What were you doing when you thought you heard this woman leave the house? I can't remember. Miss Blake, you received a long-distance telephone call from a new Rochelle pay station. Didn't you? I don't know where it came from. Who telephoned? I don't know. What did that person tell you? I can't remember. She can't remember. 
Didn't they tell you that Demir had another woman at his lodge? And didn't you, enraged by jealousy, go out there and shoot him? Frame it any way you like. I, I don't know what I'm up here for anyway. Your Honor, there's no need for any further questions. Miss Blake, don't you realize that by refusing to answer, you were placing yourself in a very serious position? I can't quite see why this defendant was placed on the stand. Your Honor, the defendant refused to confide in me. I hope that by placing him on the stand, I might get some enlightenment myself. Any further questions? No. Excuse. Court is now adjourned until two o'clock. Here comes O'Fallon. Hello, boy. Well, Bob, what do you think? We've just got one chance. We've got to play it hard. How's Millie? Same as ever. Won't budge an inch. Her silence has put her in a tough spot. Gee, we've got to put this thing over. Now, you fellas got to stay on the job. I'll do my part. Pipe down, fellas. Here's the DA. Hello, Frank. Hello, Give me Steve. a good cigar. You boys do a little more work on him. We got to keep him thinking our way. But don't over do it. Hi, Henry. Hi, DA. Hi, Chief. Well, hello, boys. <clears throat> Well, how'd you like it this morning? Oh, you got the case all sewed up. I'll say we have. I was just saying, you proved the clearest case of jealousy I've ever heard of. Jealousy was the motive, all right. I proved that beyond a doubt. How's this? Pointing an accusing finger at the attorney for defense, the orator's voice rang out like a pistol shot. Cherchez la femme, he cried. Find the woman. Is that a headline or ain't it? There. Cherchez la femme. No, I think I'd better say it in plain English. Find the woman. Well, I'll use the French in the paper. You know, it kind of gives it more class. Well, that won't be bad. Sure, we're going to have a big afternoon. Say, this little town will be on the map for a while anyhow. If you tried this case in New York, you'd be the next governor. Well, thanks, gentlemen. <laughs> well, now if you'll excuse me, I've got to get back to the courthouse. Don't forget to hear my summarization this afternoon. Oh, oh, there we are. We'll, we'll be there. We'll be right there. <laughs> oh. Freddie, I only hope we can put this over. Oh, boy, so do I. Me. Oh, Mike. Where's Tommy Rock? He's right there. Well, hello, Mike. What are you doing here? Say, what's the idea? What do you mean? Well, I don't like the looks of this thing. And from now on, you can count me out. Now, wait a minute, Mike. He gave us your word you'd keep out of town until the trial was over. Yeah. That was because you guys still would help Millie. Well, it hasn't done any good so far. And I'm going to the district attorney. Now, listen, here, Mike, you can't do that. Why, we're all for Millie. You know that. Well, I'm not so sure. But you've got to believe us. Now, they've got us almost licked. We've got just the one chance. And you're not going to spoil everything, are you? Are you? Well, I don't know. The way things have been handled, it all looks a kind of screwy to me. Oh, ah, come wait on, a minute, Mike. Mike. We're not going to do that. Who was this other woman? Who was there with Damir at the time? Isn't it reasonable to suppose that she was the one who took the place of the defendant? Who, faded by a life of dissipation, had been discarded from Damir's affections? She won't tell you why she took that long ride in the middle of the night with a gun in her hand to shoot down a man in cold blood. But isn't it clear to you? Her motive was jealousy. And what right had such a defendant even to the privilege of jealousy? Why, there's no palliation. No one distraught with grief and an overwhelming sense of injury committed this crime. And if this isn't so, why doesn't the defendant produce the other woman? Find that other woman. Let her come here if she can and tell us otherwise. Mother. Mother. Oh. Connie. Please. No, Connie, no, you shouldn't have come. Please don't listen to her. Oh, please, Mother, please. Oh, my baby. Oh, Connie, why did you come? My mother, did you think 
I wouldn't go. Your Honor, what does this mean? It means, Your Honor, we're going to place this young girl on the stand. The unknown woman. The daughter of this defendant. But, Your Honor... We mean, Your Honor, to prove that Millicent Blake went to the lodge that night and shot Jimmy Damier. Not from jealousy, but to rescue her innocent 16-year-old daughter from this blackguard who had lured her there under such circumstances that the shooting was justified. I won't let you! I won't let but you! Your Honor, this is most unethical. Order! Order! Order. Hey, me, no. Where in the witness? No. Order! <laughs> I guess we fixed them. Take a look at that jury. <laughs> Take a look at old Sandy Claus. <laughs> Saunders. Sure say la femme. <laughs> you fellas pull this frame up. We just couldn't bear to let the governor's ship get out of Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> you solemnly swear that the evidence you give in this case to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. What is your name, my dear? Constance Maitland. Is that lady your mother? Yes, sir. Then juror number nine said that he'd have shot anyone that tried to make an actress out of his daughter. But that kid putting her arms around her mother's neck was the most beautiful sight I've ever seen. I hope she keeps them there. It'll be good for both of them. You driving Millie back to New York, Tommy? Me? What gave you that idea? I don't know. I was just wondering. Here they come. Lady Maitland certainly stuck by her. Well, so have a couple of other people. It looks like Millie's going back home. <laughs> 